All right, now let's talk about chart patterns. This is more or less a combination of market structure and candlestick patterns. So a chart or price pattern is a recognizable configuration of price movement that is defined using a series of trend lines and or curves. You can kind of see some of the trend lines that automatically form with a study that I have on the right hand side on this chart and also ones that I drew that blue line. So there are three types of chart patterns. The first one is continuation, and this pattern occurs when the trend continues in its existing direction following a brief pause. The second chart pattern is reversal, and this pattern signals a change in trend direction. Finally, the third chart pattern is neutral, and this pattern signals no trend, otherwise known as chop city. So how do we use chart patterns for day trading? First of all, we use trend lines to define the pattern on the chart. And that's how pretty much chart patterns are formed, just using trend lines. So trend lines are straight lines drawn on a chart by connecting a series of descending highs or ascending lows, otherwise known as the candle wicks. Some people draw them from the candle opens or closes, but I draw my trend lines from the wicks. So when you're drawing trend lines, a minimum number of contact points that you need is two to draw a trend line, but I would say that three or more is definitely the best, but you can definitely draw a trend line with two of them. As you've seen, as you can see on the chart there, that blue line that I drew before the breakout happened. So drawing trend lines instantly tells you whether the market is in an uptrend, downtrend, or sideways for the time frame you're looking at. The larger the price movement within the pattern, the more significant the move once price breaks above or below the area of continuation. And the reason for this is because people's stops are building up on either side of the price action. So let's take a quick look at how we can identify trend lines that aren't already drawn on this chart here on the right. So as you can see that the price is in an overall downtrend signified by these two white lines. We have a lower trend line and an upper trend line. They're both pointing down, so we're in a downtrend. But you can see that price action eventually made a higher low and formed an uptrend within the overall downtrend. And eventually price broke out to the upside. After breaking this overall downtrend, as you can see here in the last white line. So you can find really good trading setups by just using trend lines. So you can look at different chart patterns. One of the biggest rules as a trader is that you should always assume a trend will continue until it has confirmed that it has reversed. Another way of saying this is trade the trend until it ends or bends. And trust me when I say this, that you will know when that happens. The first chart pattern that we're gonna talk about is the pennant or the triangle pattern. This is a continuation pattern. So this pennant pattern is drawn with two trend lines, one uptrend line and one downtrend line that eventually converge. So it typically looks like a triangle. That's why it's a, I have this labeled as a pennant or a triangle pattern. So while this pattern is forming, price tends to consolidate on lower volume before setting up for the continuation move in the direction of the overall trend. And we're going to look at an example of a pennant pattern here in a second. So the breakout in the direction of the trend should be on higher volume. Again, same thing I talked about in the candlestick pattern section. You need to confirm the patterns with the volume to make sure that there is momentum in the favor of the trade that you're taking. So here's a chart on the NQ futures. If you can't identify the potential pennant pattern here on the 15 minute chart, I'll draw it for you real quick. So there's a triangle pattern here, also known as a pennant pattern. We're making a series of lower highs and higher lows, eventually forming a triangle that converge eventually pushing the price higher above the previous high. So the entry on this pattern should be once we break the previous high and put the stop below the last swing low, which we can see there is that bullish green candle right below that trend line. And notice how this breakout higher is on increased volume. So we can be confident that we are definitely in the continuation phase where we're going to be able to get paid more on this trade. So we should be holding it longer and trailing our stop appropriately. And then you can see here when price stalled a little bit and consolidated another pennant pattern formed again before we again broke out higher. So here you could have actually, if you missed the first one, you could take the second pennant pattern breakout, or if you're still in the first trade, you could potentially add 
to this trade and move your stop up appropriately. And you can see this was an overnight trade in the second breakout. And you can see that the volume increased again to the upside, confirming the direction. Next up is another continuation pattern called the flag pattern. And this is recognized by using two parallel trend lines that can slope up, down, or horizontal. A flag that has an upward slope appears as a pause in a downtrend with decreasing volume. And a flag that has a downward slope appears as a pause in an uptrend with decreasing volume. So volume increases as price breaks out of the flag to continue in the direction of the trend. This is very important. So if you're gonna jump in on a breakout, of a flag pattern, you want to make sure that you're seeing volume increase in the direction that price is moving. And let's look at an example here. So this is actually a bearish flag. The trend, obviously, you can see on Slumber J is down from the past few sessions. So we're definitely in a downtrend. So what do we do in a downtrend? We short the rip. Any potential move up, we're looking to short that. And you can see I have the trend lines drawn there, you can see a bearish flag. It's more or less forming a nice parallel up channel, also known as a flag pattern here. And then what happens the very next day is we gap down, we're, we're gonna be continuing to the downside. So knowing that chart pattern the day before, we can set ourselves up to take this stock short to the downside. So, that bearish flag formed and it was confirmed when the price gapped down the next day. So we want to actually take it short with the entry more or less below the break of support and a stop above the high of that bearish flag. And then we just trail our stop down appropriately down to support where price ends up consolidating. You'll see the same exact pattern as well, day trading, the futures market as well. One of my favorite patterns also to trade is the wedge pattern. It's also a continuation. So it's similar to pennants in that they are drawn using two converging trend lines, but the trend lines are both going up or down. That's really important to know. So a down wedge represents a pause during an uptrend. And an up wedge represents a pause during a downtrend. Volume is typically lower as the pattern forms, but increases when price breaks above or below the wedge pattern. So let's take a look at an example of a wedge pattern. So this is a falling wedge pattern on Amazon. So it's again, it's a continuation pattern. And you can see after earnings, price was very bullish, uh, breaking a bunch of resistance. And then what we did was we formed a falling wedge. Since we we're in an uptrend and we we're making lower lows, lower highs, down to support, consolidating, we we're waiting for a break above the top of the trend line for positioning, our, positioning ourselves for move to the upside. So once price did that between Tuesday and Wednesday, the next day we want to put an entry at previous resistance, now support, with a stop below the low of that falling wedge pattern. And then trail our stop up appropriately as the trade is working, as you can see on the right, as Amazon went from about 2040 on our entry all the way up to 2160 or higher. And here's a rising wedge pattern on Caterpillar. And this is a bearish rising wedge pattern. So we're in a major downtrend and price is trying to make a comeback and it's getting up to resistance. If you look all the way to the left, You can see resistance here if you just draw a line and we made it all the way up in a couple of days back to where we sold off from. And eventually the next day, price kind of sells off a little bit and breaks out of the rising wedge pattern to the downside. So what we do is that we set up an entry to short the retest of the previous support now resistance with a stop above the high where we sold off from and we ride this bad boy down to the support level until we see a reversal sign and then take our profit. Cup and handle patterns are also very reliable as well and they are continuation patterns. So for a bullish continuation pattern, uptrend has pause but will continue when the pattern is confirmed. So the cup portion of the pattern should be a U shape that resembles the rounding of a bowl. And I'll show you an example of how this actually looks like a cup with a handle. 
and the handle forms on the right side of the cup in the form of a short pullback that resembles a flag or pennant pattern before we break out to the upside. Once the handle is complete, price may break out to new highs and resume this trend higher. So here's the cues, also known as the technology ETF. So let's take a look. This is the weekly chart, actually. So since we're on a longer time frame, this pattern is going to represent a more significant move once it plays out and is confirmed. So first, you can see the cup. We have a pullback, and it's formed a rounded bottom, more or less. And then several weeks leading up after that, we have a pennant pattern that formed the handle on the cup before we eventually broke out of that pennant pattern to the upside. And there are two places you actually could have got in on this trade. You could have got in on the breakout of the pennant pattern to the upside there or the stop below that weekly low or the even the two weekly lows before that just to be conservative. Or you could have waited for that wick to come down and retest the tops of the old resistance now support. And notice how price just rallied up the next few weeks to you know all two new all time highs. Now let's talk about some reversal patterns. The first one is going to be the wedge pattern, and it's similar to pennants in that they are drawn using two converging trend lines, but the trend lines are both going up or down. So a down wedge, also known as a falling wedge, represents a continuation during a downtrend before reversal occurs. And an up wedge represents a continuation during an uptrend before reversal occurs. Volume is typically lower as the pattern forms, but increases when the price breaks above or below the wedge pattern. The reason why I love this pattern so much is because you can have a very sharp reversal due to trap traders that are chasing the price higher or lower before it instantly reverses on them once they enter the trade. So let's take a look at a falling wedge pattern on NQ. This is a reversal pattern. Remember, you see a falling wedge here. You both have both trend lines are going down and they're converging towards each other. And eventually, all the sh people that are shorting and shorting and shorting, they're going to run out and people are going to end up just jumping on the train, the short train, so to speak. And eventually, all those people that are shorting too late are going to be trapped because we're going to have an instant sharp reversal, as you can see here. And price breaks the downtrend. You can get in once that trend line is broken to be more aggressive, or you can wait for price to break above previous resistances and retest, get in on the consolidation for the move, for the continuation move higher back to the upside. Next up, let's talk about the flag pattern reversal. Previously, we talked about the flag pattern continuation, but now this one's going to be specific to a reversal. So this is recognized by using two parallel trend lines again that can slope up, down, or horizontal. A flag that has a downward slope appears as a continuation in a downtrend with decreasing volume. A flag that has an upward slope appears as a continuation in an uptrend with decreasing volume. So volume typically increases as price breaks out of the flag to reverse in the opposite direction of the trend. So let's take a look at a reversal flag pattern on the NQ. You can see that we're in a major downtrend on the 512 tick chart, but you can see how perfectly price is bouncing off these trend lines. So eventually, one way or the other, we're either going to break down significantly or we're going to break the downtrend and shift up to the upside, which is what happened here. So looking long here, we would want to wait till we break above the downtrend here and then put a stop below the previous structure to the left to give ourselves some room here. This trade is a little bit of a little aggressive so you could actually enter a little bit higher on the consolidation and the rotation here. But either way, it's a high probability trade. Once price reversed out of the down downward flag pattern to the upside. Next up, let's talk about double top and double bottom patterns. These are also reversal patterns. So a double top has an M shape and it indicates a bearish reversal in trend. And this often occurs after an extended bullish rally where there's just a lack of buyers to keep pushing the price higher. So this pattern is confirmed when bullish structure breaks down. You don't want to step in front of a train when you're shorting a double top, you want to wait for price to reject and then break through support and short the retest. So that way you're riding the momentum down. And that's exactly what happened here. 
on this stock right here, NTRS. So you can see that this is about five days worth of data. We made a high to the left here, and then eventually price got back up to there and couldn't push higher. And then we eventually saw that price broke down through support, which would be our entry once price breaks that support on strong volume and keep our stop above the high, ride this position all the way back down to support. Now a double bottom on the other hand has a W shape and indicates a bullish reversal in trend. And it often occurs after an extended bearish rally. In other words, there's just a lack of sellers to keep pushing the price on or someone came in and started buying the market up causing the price to hold the level that it was testing to go back up. And this pattern is confirmed when bear structure breaks down. And you can see here, the two ovals circled the double bottom areas. We had a low and then we came back there two days or three days later to test it again and we held. And then the ne very next day we broke above what was resistance now support for a push back up to the upside. And we keep our stop below those double bottom areas to give ourselves some room. Another reverse pattern that we use is the head and shoulders pattern. And this resembles a baseline with three highs. The outside two are close in height and the middle is the highest. And you'll see why we call it the head and shoulders pattern in a second here. So this pattern predicts a bullish to bearish trend reversal. And when the neckline breaks, sell stops are triggered causing a big sell off. And this usually, this pattern develops over a longer time frame which makes it more significant. Uh, once, once the neckline breaks, you'll see a big move to the downside. So this can be one of the most reliable trend reversal patterns out there. And here's an example why. Here is EAF. And let's take a look at where the head and shoulders pattern actually is. So there's the left shoulder. Then you have the head and you have the right shoulder, which is almost about the same height as the left shoulder. Then you have a neckline where more or less we had the same lows where the same support was holding. So once price breaks the neckline, as you see where that 1070 came in, where it's for forming a falling wedge, as you can see too at the trend line, which is also bearish in this case, we would put an entry to get short on the retracement, then put our stop above previous resistances or previous supports now resistances. And then we'd ride that price all the way down to previous support where you can see all the way to the left where price finally found support down here. And that's where we bounced here. And that's where you'd wanna take your profit. Another extremely reliable pattern is the inverted head and shoulders pattern. So it's almost the exact opposite of the head and shoulders pattern because this one is more, this one is represents a bearish to bullish trend reversal. And this pattern resembles a baseline with three lows. The outside two are close in height and the middle is the lowest. And the pattern, like I mentioned, predicts bearish to bullish trend reversal. So how we trade this pattern is when the neckline breaks, buy stops are triggered, causing a big buy event that you wanna ride the momentum up to profit from in a long position. So it can be one of the most reliable trend reversal patterns as well. So here's an example of work. This is actually a trade that I recently took I'm still holding the position on it and it looks very solid. And let's just show you the analysis that I had on this. Besides the horizontal support and resistance, you can see the head and shoulder pattern that played out here. So you have a neckline here at 2407. We can't break above that. We have a left shoulder where we consolidated and then we had a head form at the bottom and then a right shoulder form pretty much the same height as the left shoulder. And once we finally broke above the neckline, our entry would be the retest of the 2407 and put a stop below that big bullish candle and ride this up to our upper profit targets. Now this pattern, the goofy foot W pattern is something that I came up with myself just from trading over the past few years. Some A pattern that I noticed that you can get in on a trade sooner rather than uh, waiting a little bit. So it'll, it's a little bit more aggressive, but it tends to work uh, like I would say 70 to 80% of the time. And it's, it works best with a falling or rising wedge reversal pattern. And let's say, I'll show you an example in a second. It's just much easier to see then, but this pattern predicts 
a big reversal and trend at a strong area of support or resistance. And that part is critical. Uh, you want to take this trade the opposite direction that price is going once this pattern forms at a support or resistance because uh, it the reversal is quite significant and you can get paid quite a bit in such a short amount of time because that's how strong this reversal can be. So a bullish reversal occurs when price is in a steep downtrend then stops, forms a higher low, then traps all the sellers shorting at the low. Bearish reversal occurs when price is in a steep uptrend then stops, forms a lower high, then traps all the buyers buying at the high. So like I mentioned, it's my personal favorite pattern. I'm sharing with you guys. Here's an example of the NQ on the 512 tick chart. Here's a, it's more like a pennant pattern, almost a falling wedge pattern, but I would say this is, it can be used with a pennant pattern or a falling wedge pattern, either one works and you can do, that's for a bullish setup and vice versa, take the opposite of that pattern for a bearish setup. But let's take a look at how this pattern formed right here. So the higher low actually formed right there where that oval is circling. We touched the trend line and then couldn't go lower anymore. And then what you wanna wait for here is you don't want to jump in once you see this reversal happen. You want to see that higher low form from the, the low that tested the trend line. And then if you're aggressive like me, you could put an entry at the top of those previous candles with a stop below the low and risk, I don't know, five to 10 points on NQ for a potential huge move to back to the upside, which we see here. And you can see that price just keeps making higher lows and you would just be trailing along this tick chart for a massive profit. One of my favorite patterns to trade. Highly recommend to pay attention to. Uh, mainly on the tick charts where you'll see this happen. Lastly, one of the most simple patterns that you can see is a rectangle or box pattern. This is a neutral pattern. Where price isn't really doing much. It's just trading between a range. And this is recognizable, like I mentioned, when price is making even highs and even lows. This pattern is neither bullish nor bearish since the market is consolidating. Bullish trades should set up to buy the low of the rectangle with a target back to the top, whereas bearish trades should set up to sell the top of the rectangle with a target back to the bottom. And price typically breaks with strong momentum once support or resistance fails, which is another potential trade setup if you don't want to trade this neutral one and you're more of a momentum trader that you wait for breakouts. So this is a perfect strategy for slow days in the market where we're consolidating and range bound with no, no direction whatsoever. Now here's an example on the NQ futures on the 512 tick chart. So you can see here price formed a box. We're more than likely at a resistance here. Price is consolidating between, let's just say 95.95 to almost 96.10. So that's about a 15 point range. So that's $300 per contract on the E-mini NASDAQ futures. So very low risk setups, you can buy the bottom with a stop below, like a five point stop. You can risk a hundred bucks to make 250 to 300 every time. You can do that two to three times before I would say it's not gonna work anymore. And then you can do the same on the upside if you wanna short the upper part of the range with a stop above the top. And as you can see here, like I mentioned, once the price breaks out of the box, it usually moves with significant momentum to the to the direction that price breaks down from, which in this case was to the downside.